Okay, fire away. Bam, thank you. Hi, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me for as part of the uh, the My Research White Matter series. And thank you, Heidi, to everyone in the call for, for asking me to give the talk this morning. Um, like all talks, I probably have four times the amount of material that I can cover within a 20 minute slot. Uh, I take all that from uh, John Tucker, who's helped me prepare this talk and jointly working on this with me. But hopefully, I'll be able to give you a whistle stop tour of the research and the interest uh, that I'm doing at the moment. Um, so today's talk is going to look at the emergence of computing education in schools, particularly in Wales. But as the changes in curriculum and changes in qualifications have happened, this is something that impacts not just Wales, but the UK. And there's a wider context piece as well. Um, this talk certainly could have been called the rise and fall and rise of computing in schools. It's had quite a turbulent journey from its uh, emergence in the early 60s up to the present day, where it's been uh, in between completely ignored uh, and underrepresented as a important subject within our education and curriculum. Um, the aim of today's talk, as I said, is to give you that kind of whistle stop tour of the uh, of computing education within schools. And um, as part of my research, I'm focusing on three main timelines and sort of three focuses. One focuses on the hardware that's being used to teach computing and the hardware available to students as well as educators as part of this uh, introduction. And um, we've also focused in on the curriculum and the qualifications, so the driving factors for why, what schools are delivering, um, there's the inception of this new curriculum and a lot of teachers taking this on board themselves into formal qualifications and into the sort of a, a really, the really interesting world of how these qualifications um, come to life really, you know, this, they start with a, a framework, an idea, then they become a formal qualification, they get adapted, and then you, they get awarded and they get changed over the years. And we're also focusing on the support that's been on offer. Support for computing teachers uh, has been uh, apparent from the early 70s, in fact, with hub, uh, regional hubs for computing support back in the early and mid late 80s, as well as support that, as most of you know, TechnoCamps does all across uh, all across Wales um, uh, at the moment. And well, I'll talk a little bit more about the impact that it's had as we go through. So that's what I want to, that's what we're going to try and do today. I'm going to try and do, try and cover things and hopefully the Q&A, then we can talk about some more interesting points. Um, Hopefully, some of you recognise the person in the slide. I did put his, I did put his name there, Samuel Peppet. Um, a fantastic quote from him is, "You can't teach people everything they need to know. The best you can do is position them with where they can find what they need to know when they need to know it." And I think this is something that's so important for uh, computer science. Uh, really, for those of you who aren't aware of uh, Papert's work, uh, he did, did a lot of research within AI and uh, constructional learning, and actually was the co-inventor of the Logo programming language, which has a significant impact on teaching computation and coding within schools, uh, within, the educa within education. Um, so in terms of my aims of what I'm working on at the moment, it's, it's about uncovering, rescuing, and documenting the origins of the development of computing education in Wales. There's a, a lack of um, academic papers and research that have gone into particularly looking at tracking this history. And we hope to uncover some, some of the trends and some of the factors that have Im impacted this. Uh, once we get this material, is to actually create an archive of this material to, to, uh, through documents and first-hand testimonies, which will then live within Swansea University's History of Computing Collection, or HOC. Um, it's to look at the complex interplay between tech, the progress of technology, the needs within society, and the educational provision that was available which has varied over the time, particularly when you think about computing, and to consider all of this in light of future uh, of computing within education. There's been some, if for those who aren't aware, within Wales, we're going through a massive curriculum reform at the moment with uh, Curriculum for Wales 2022, which will be starting teaching from September 22 for all ages from 3 to 11. Uh, it's involved a massive restructure, which has actually involved computer science being seen as a core science subject and part of the science and technology AOLE, or area of learning experience. So looking at uh, these trends throughout time and actually looking at the effective delivery of some of these qualifications and what's worked well and what hasn't could hopefully influence the uh, implementation of the new curriculum going forward. 
Um, and as I said, as part of this program, there's, there's as part of the research we're doing, there's, there's many timelines. And um, this is just a rough idea of where we're going to look at today. We're going to go all the way from the, the early emergence back in the uh, mid to late 60s, looking both from a context point of view in terms of computing in general, but also a uh, particularly at the qualifications. And um, we're then going to look at the introduction of IT. In fact, in 82, there was a year of IT which was pioneered by Kenneth Baker, who we'll talk about a little bit later on as well. The start of the national curriculum in 88, the transition from CSEs and O-levels into GCSEs, um, the drop of computer studies as a qualification. There's some great projects that I'm not gonna to talk today. Um, the Tesco 2000 project stands out to me. Um, I'm not sure how many people who similar age to me in the call, but might remember this from a school point of view or even from a hearing of it, where they looked at getting uh, every student in the UK connected to the internet, but not just actually using the internet, but contributing to the internet. And it's still one of the largest projects for um, contribution in the Welsh language to the internet from school children. So it's a really great project. And then back to more modern, where we have the reintroduction of computing as a qualification uh, at GCSE level, and then looking a little bit at Curriculum for Wales and the qualifications of the future. Um, so I want to start sort of setting the context. Um, the Computers, obviously, the widespread use of computers starts sort of uh, in the early 60s or starting to use it. Things such as finite element method uh, was uh, developed. And most of you probably know that Olga Zenkovic uh, pioneered this in uh, the early 60s or 63, I believe, working on the first computer that the university had with one of his uh, research fellows. I believe it was an IBM 1620. And then for, if we were in the boardroom with the COFO today, you, of course, could have seen a part of this machine that sits within the cabinet there. And um, so the use of computing within uh, across society became really abundant. There was the emergence of new programming languages, uh, the final like the, some of the final developments of it. Algol 60 was in work in the in the late 50s, but then sort of finalized in the uh, very early 60s, 61, I believe. And um, we actually have in the history of community collection uh, a uh, quite a rare report on the on the algorithmic language, Algol 60. And there were lots of things that were changing, other things such as the idea of software portability. Um, before, or the idea of running a piece of software on one machine and then being able to run it on another machine was completely alien and not even, uh, was completely not possible prior to some of the developments around some th the machines such as the IBM 360, which looked at software portability from one processor to another, which made a massive change. I think it would be, if you think about the world we live in today, and you think about our phones and our computers and our tablets, actually they're all basically running all the same software that's being translated for the processor they have and not being rewritten several times. But back then it was a very new thing. You've got things uh, such as the program, uh, the development of programming tools, uh, particularly Unix at that time, the development of the programming language C, as well as the lesser known language B by Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. And the idea of networking and transferring files across uh, computers from not just within one graph geographical location, but across geographic locations. So you could argue that it was kind of the, 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 the starting point of the inception of the internet, but certainly not the internet that we know today. So that's the context from a, from a computing point of view. And you can, and obviously this is something that really excites me about computer science in general is, it's a subject that's evolving. It's a very, it's a very um, young subject, and it's it it goes through some fun, some major changes um, throughout a very short space of time. Now, if we look at computing in schools, actually, even coming, so the 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 sixties had lots of major milestones, and um, computing started getting introduced into schools in the late sixties. It emerged in schools not actually as a qualification, but from teachers who were extremely passionate or had heard about the use of computers within their disciplines, particularly mathematics teachers, who wanted to inspire and share this knowledge with the pupils within their schools. With this uh, rise of people wanting to do the subject and the introduction of 
many maths, uh, mathematic academics within universities looking at the use of computing. Many courses were set up. And in fact, one of the earliest courses in Wales was uh, delivered by the Polytechnic, uh, the computing department at the Polytechnic in 69 by Douglas Green, who was at the time the head of the maths and computing department there. And actually back then, and we'll, we'll talk a lot about quals as we go through, but actually the idea of delivering bespoke qualifications, teachers back in the late 60s, which is completely contrast to how it works now, could actually develop their own qualifications. They could write a specification, they could write a set of uh, papers, uh, they would then get this accredited by an awarding body, and they would then they would then be responsible for running and delivering that call and it would be moderated by the awarding body. And this was the first type of qualification that was delivered in Wales and it would be, it would be considered a mode three qualification. Um, this actually, there's the origins of this actually happened across many different sectors and the, the idea of actually introducing computational topics into um, into mathematics was already happening. And in fact, in between 68 and 70, there was an uh, alternative syllabus developed for the applied mathematics A-level. It was delivered in two South Wales schools, Barry Grammar School for Boys and Bridgend Grammar Technical School. And it included additional computing topics, replacing some of the, uh, some of the mathematics topics, things like Boolean algebra, circuits, numerical algorithms, et cetera. And in fact, this was the, it's quite close to home. In fact, this was the A-level qualification that our very own John Tucker actually undertook. Uh, I believe John still has all of his notes for this. So if any of you are interested in delving into how John revised, I'll tell you his methodology of doing things hasn't changed since then. Um, he, you'll be, you could absolutely delve into those. As I said, it was an, it was an introduction of bringing in some more computational based um, concepts into a mathematics syllabus. Th things like axioms, looking at translating uh, text into formulas, uh, so complex, so there's an example on the on the, the right of one of the questions, taking some complex um, system or idea and then creating a formula um, and also looking at designing circuits from uh, specifications written in Boolean algebra. So we were already seeing for and many of us in, uh, in the room at the moment are involved in computing education in one form or another. We're already seeing very common topics that are, uh, that are present within our quals at the moment, as well as um, within our university courses. Um, now, as I said, to collect this information, we've had to the documents don't really exist. And actually the, there is a lack of um, papers and uh, archiving of this. So we've collected quite a lot of testimony. So I want to sidetrack a little bit and talk a little bit about Tony Timbrell. Uh, Tony Timbrell was a early maths teacher in South Wales and actually started delivering computer science very, very early on. He did a mathematics degree at Imperial College London. Completed, he came back to uh, South, South Wales to do his teacher training in maths. University College of Cardiff. He started in Croyster Grammar School and then he later moved on as head of maths at Meisteg Grammar School. And this is a picture, I believe, of Meisteg Grammar School back then. Now, what's interesting about Tony's story, he talked a lot about the introduction of um, computing and actually he attended the course in the Polytechnic in uh, 1969 really uh, invigorated his um, passion and, and a feeling that actually this was the future. Using computers to solve some of these problems and to solve other problems was really important and really wanted to bring this back to his pupils at school. Um, interestingly, his first introduction to computing wasn't until his third year in maths in uh, Imperial, and it was only very subtle even then. So Tony went about actually developing a mode three qualification which he successfully wrote and delivered. So we had our first students in Wales actually completing a qualification in computer, uh, computer studies, as it was called then. Um, there's a lot, there's a whole timeline about the name changes of qualifications. And maybe this is a good time to talk about the fact that when I talk about computing, I'm talking broadly about all subjects within the umbrella. Uh, and then each subject, each sort of um, qualification has its own sort of name. Computer studies was commonly used for GCSE or level two based qualifications uh, in the early uh, dawn of them being developed. So he developed this qualification. He then went on, delivered it, successfully delivered it, and it was accredited by the WJC. Um, 
one thing I wanted to touch on, which is a kind of a, a, a tangent, is think, she thinking about how you would teach computer studies in the 1970s. And I think it was extremely different. Now, the, to draw one big comparison, and uh, Tony said this himself, actually, he wouldn't have been able to deliver this qualification without the fantastic support of his head teacher. And actually, to this day, we are we struggle with the support of uh, particularly computing from senior leadership teams within schools. So it's funny to think that actually that was that was the same sort of issue or requirement back then. Um, and actually, you might be wondering why there's a photo of something called the Four Sevens in my stake. It is, in fact, a pub, but apparently it was also doubled as a petrol station at the same time. I was, I'm not sure why that was the case, but it was. And um, so when they, when he was developing and delivering this qualification, the students would create their code um, and they actually got the opportunity to run this code. But of course, back in the early 70s, they didn't have a computer in their school. So they had to connect to the mainframe computer in Glamorgan, which was in uh, the Glamorgan um, town hall. It was part of the finance department there. So at lunchtime, with the support of the head teacher, Tony and his students would take their terminal, they would take it up to the headmaster's office. At this time, there was only one phone line in the school. They would connect there. They would call up the interchange. They would get a direct connection from their telephone to the mainframe in the town hall. They would connect it up, and they would then get to run their code on this mainframe. Um, again, you probably are still wondering why there's a pub involved. Well, as I said, there was only one phone line in the school at the time. So effectively for that one, that one hour lunch, the school was uncontactable. But not only that, back then, if a operator made a direct data line between one phone to another, they would not break that line unless they were explicitly told to do so. So at the end of the set, at the end of lunchtime, Tony would dash across the road to the four sevens, ask them to use their phone, phone up the interchange to get the connection disconnected. Um, and as I said, this idea of um, you know, a group of students with a head teacher support moving this terminal up, having to run across the road. Tony didn't tell me whether he had a pint or not in between. I don't know how long it takes to phone the interchange and get it disconnected, but maybe there was, there was such an opportunity. So teaching computing was very, very different back then. Um, and in terms of what we're looking at then, it is really delving in to the qualifications. There are several awarding bodies who've offered qualifications across Wales. It's very much been the case that the WJC, the Welsh Joint Education Committee, which was formed uh, in 1948, has been one of the sort of um, mainstay for delivery of qualifications. And in fact, in Wales today, GCSEs and A-levels are only offered by WJC, not because they have to be, but it's because WJC are one of the only awarding bodies who put them forward because of the often because of the small market share, as well as the fact of them requiring uh, requirement to be bilingual. Now, in terms of what the WJC do, they go through cycles where, as I said, they offer wide a wide range of qualifications, and these qualifications go through as a cycle of being developed, delivered, revised and terminated. And I think that's for us in uncovering some of these um, journeys of the qualification involves looking at these changes, looking at when they've been revised and looking at how they've changed throughout time. Um, we've actually managed to uncover the first ever Pan Wales uh, qualification at uh, level two or CSE slash O level in computing. It was called computer studies. It was first taught in 1972 with students first getting their award in 1974. Um, we've been working really closely with uh, Alan Perry from the WJC, and my thanks go to Alan for all his support with this project, to actually get into this archive where it's, it's all of the information is there, we believe, but actually it's not archived in an easily accessible way. So it's a, it's a real big task to try and find some of these things. So the first, uh, the first award happened in 74, and in fact, an A-level followed called Computer Science in 1978. And when we talk about the journey of these qualifications, one thing that I, I should point out straight away is the A level in computing, uh, in a computing subject, which was first called computer science, then computing, and now it's back to computer science. We have no real good reason for that. Uh, actually, it's always been an option. But the number of students taking it, particularly after the lack of um, it within school, uh, within computing within schools, dropped dramatically and is still extremely low to this day. Now, part of this research is to actually delve into these papers and to start looking at the content. And um, it was quite a um, 
it was quite a shock for me to actually see the amount of content that is similar to what we currently deliver as part of our GCSE and A-level specification, as well as many of our first year topics within university programs. Things like flowcharts were there, um, consideration of CECL as a high level programming language, which is the computing education in schools instruction language. I'm so glad they called it CECL. It's a, quite a nice acronym. Uh, low level programming was in there. So using basic mnemonics and simple instructions, understanding computer architecture, operating systems and program structure. So many, many of these, uh, many, many of these um, things, uh, many, many of the topics here actually mimic throughout the course we currently offer and actually are with uh, part of our staple of what computer science really is to this day. Um, I just, Alan just said he was one of the first to, in 1978 to do an A-level in computing. Is that right, Alan? Uh, from your date is right. I did it in 1978. The, um, I was at Hawardian School, but there was um, a guy who was, I think most of his time would have been doing sort of, um, oh, crumbs, just forgotten the name, sitting guilds type stuff mm -hmm. at the FE College at Landeth, but did Friday afternoon, uh, two of us from Hawardian and a group from um, Bishop of Landeth went there. And yeah, so I, I hadn't realised that was the first year it was done. So fantastic. yeah, and I should absolutely. That's that's great. Thank you, Alan. I, I should caveat you. I and our focus really is on the WJC. Now, other exam boards did exist and they were they were actually offering more in Wales at particularly A level than they do to this day. So we are when I say first, I do mean first from a WJ point of view. But if you were in, in Clandaff and Cardiff, it's a good chance you actually would have done the WJC base one. Thank you, Alan. That's great. Um, so as I said, I've got lots of content. I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of speed up a little bit because I think the end of the content is, is really exciting. Now, tracking these developments is important. Computing starts to really begin to change the world in the 70s. Computer science is established within universities, but they're often small departments. Computer science starts in Swansea in 67. The idea of microprocessors being more accessible. Decimalization also happens, which has a massive impact on software. And as I said, we have this uh, introduction of these pan Wales qualifications being offered at O level and A level. Um, to move forward a little bit, so we've talked a lot, I talk about computing, if we're going to look at computing, we have to not only look at computer science, but also look at IT, and uh, Kenneth Baker played a, a significant role within this, some of the major things that he did included developing a national strategy for IT, he was the first minister for IT, information technology, he also proposed that we needed a minister for IT, very clever making his own job. I think that's a great way to go about these things. Uh, he spearheaded the idea of the year of IT, which is in 82. Uh, he also was fundamental in uh, the program to place a British made computer in every school uh, and around 84. Now, the implementation of the program took a lot longer, but this included putting an ACON uh, BBC Micro or a research machine 3802 into every school in the UK so that every school was getting access to this hardware. Uh, he was then the Minister for Education between 86 and 89. A really important time for education in Wales and uh, within Wales and the England with the introduction of the uh, 1988 Education Act and still to this day is in very much involved in education uh, in IT from an industrial and education point of view and in 2016 actually published a really great white paper called the digital revolution that looks at reflecting on some of the changes and the impacts that IT have had. Um, some really quick highlights, I'm going to skim over some of this, um, as part of his national strategy for IT, there were some recommendations. One of the quotes that really stood out to me is that we need more young, we need more people trained at all levels in these new skills. And the fact that our polytechnics and universities are not turning out significant, uh, sufficient electronic engineers and the bias against computer science needs to be rectified. So, you know, there was a massive call at this time from a political point of view that we needed to be doing more to get more um, people into the field of computing. Um, he developed these ideas. He was a real pioneer of pushing it politically for IT and was then involved in uh, replacing the Education Act of 94, uh, which was by Rab Butler, uh, and introduced the Education uh, Reform Act 1988. Um, this is probably the most important education uh, reform act that's happened within the last century because it really did begin to put um, some of the key education concepts that we know and still use to this day. And um, the idea of a standardized cur curriculum, 
Um, I should also say this was only England and Wales. Scotland already had their own um, education system at this point. Uh, we had the introduction of key stages, something that, again, is used uh, very, uh, very much to this day. Um, the idea of evaluating pupil skills at the end of each key stage was brought in. Uh, some of you might remember even sitting sats when you were told you were tired, you had grades as you moved between one stage of your education to another. And the probably the major change in terms of qualifications was the idea of changing from O levels into GCSEs. Um, in fact, there's there's lots of um, information out there that in, that um, Ken Baker actually wanted to change A levels as well. Um, but the, Margaret Thatcher believed that the brand of A-Level was far too strong and widely recognised to change the name. So we stuck with the idea of being called A-Levels, but renamed our Level 2 qualifications to uh, GCSEs. Now, this was a really interesting time for computing. It was a really interesting time for many subjects. And I actually believed before starting this journey that this was where computer studies disappeared. Um, but I was very surprised to learn, actually, that computer studies did transition to an, a GCSE. So the effect on computer studies actually was very similar to other subjects. Um, there was a reduction in the, if you will, heavier academic topics within the subject. And, but the actual, the majority of topics stayed the same, although they were assessed in very, uh, in more accessible ways. Now, I haven't got time to really look at these in a lot of detail, but you can see, and I showed this earlier, the kind of the, the format of this, uh, the O level here from 74 versus, and the, the ones up to the 85 are very similar, versus the first page of these computer studies, GCSE in computer studies. It starts very dramatically different with a photo looking at uh, hardware and actually asking students um, sort of smaller, easier to answer questions. So computer studies still existed then. Um, and you might be thinking, you know, where does IT come into this? Well, interestingly, in 92, I, 92 saw the introduction of a new GCC qualification in IT. Uh, with this introduction of IT, it actually meant that computer studies was no longer offered at GCSE level. Um, I believe they might have even planned to get rid of the A level in computing, but actually that never came to fruition. Um, and this this for from what we from the date that we have is the point where we saw a significant decline in the number of students in wales and the uk taking computer science in schools and um, i wouldn't i would say this is the major factor that that's made that change we had the numbers weren't very strong beforehand but this had a dramatic effect on them and um, and when we looked at the IET qualification, we, we're still looking for the first IET paper. We're hoping to, to uncover these, to compare them. But we've been able to gather some fantastic testimony from people. Um, uh, Jason Davis, who's currently the um, DT, uh, I, initial teacher training lecturer in Cardiff Metropolitan University, actually started teaching uh, one of the very early IET specifications um, to college level students. Um, and it was very similar to computer studies, but it sort of changed its focus. It focused on the use of technology within industry more. It included very much the use of uh, software, word processing, spreadsheets, and databases, which still to this day are, are staples of our IT qualifications. Um, and it shared quite a lot of topics with uh, computer studies as it was then. The problem was that actually, as time went on, many of these more, we would consider maybe academic or computer science-based subjects, began to get faded out or dropped in favor of more application-based um, topics um, obviously at the moment i'm talking about it we often refer to it as ict uh, it was quite hard to actually pin this down and, and discover this but actually the c was formally recommended to be introduced in 1997 uh, as part of the stevenson report uh, on information and communications technology in school and where they they defined the fact that they wanted to define ict uh, communication, they wanted to add communications to IT and um, to reflect that both information and communications technology are important. Now, this was published in 97. It was commissioned by Tony Blair and David Bunkett prior to them, um, prior to Tony Blair's term, in fact. So it was they were already looking at this before they uh, before Tony Blair went into office. So this is where I where IT became ICT. And actually, with the publication of this report, awarding bodies took notice and actually then change what they were offering to ICT rather than IT. Again, the, the topic itself didn't actually change. Um, 
to move forward, and, and I know I've already taken over 20 minutes, so I'm going to do this quickly. Um, when we look at more modern times, um, many of you within this world will, will know of this, but the fall of IT happened at the BET conference in 2012, where Michael Gove, the then Secretary of State for Education, stood up and announced that uh, it, ICT curriculum was university knowledge to be unambitious, demotivating and dull, and it had to go. And he suggested in his place, they would introduce a new computing curriculum, which was ambitious, stretching and exciting. Um, I think it's a nice idea, but I, it's certainly the case that uh, removing IT is certainly not what many educators wanted to see. And it's worth noting that this is only in England. And to this day, in fact, you cannot take a GCSE in IT within English, within the English education system based on this very dramatic change. It actually forced schools to move from teaching IT to, to directly teaching computing without any trans translation. So students who, in, in, the, in many schools, I would say that they have a cohort of 200 um, final year students at GCSE level, between 75 to 100 take IT as a qualification. So in these schools in England, they were forced then to either take computing, uh, which teachers certainly weren't prepared to, uh, weren't ready to teach, um, or they didn't do a digital qualification, which I think is a real shame. And that's still the case to this day. There are alternatives out there, but uh, it's not something that's being widely offered. In Wales, 2012 actually saw the introduction of the first WJC specification for computer science um, coming back onto the scene. Um, the interesting thing for me is if it, when I've compared the specification of the GCSE, uh, the 1992 GCSE and the, the one that was introduced in 2012, the crossover of the similarities are quite striking. Um, of course, there's been quite a lot of modernization. Uh, things like the introduction of the use of things like Greenfoot to look at Java development and OO, um, low level coding through a simulator rather than actual low level coding using LMC and the introduction of a problem-solving style non-examined assessment or NEA, which could be answered in, uh, or supported to be answered in three different high-level languages, which interestingly was C, Python, and Java. Now, this qualification, obviously, it, when, it was, when it began to be offered with, with all non-core subjects, if you will, um, teachers weren't really prepared to teach this. Um, in Wales, there was a massive call for people to support this, and this is where Technocamps, as part of the TechnoTeach program, really stepped in. Um, we, when there was an absolute outcry for significant CPD within, uh, within computing, and we began to offer an accredited program. Uh, back, we actually started delivering this program in 2013, so it was very much on the heels of the introduction, and it really focused on improving the competencies and confidence of teachers within computer science. And um, this was one of our, this was our second cohort to go through. And some of the data that we had from them, if you look at actually how they rated their understanding prior to the course, uh, no, and there was about a one third split between okay, poor and very poor. And by the end of the course, over two thirds were good and one third said excellent. So there was a significant shift change here in terms of teachers, but it, this, this feeling and understanding and this fear, if you will, of computing and delivery of it was a, was a major thing for teachers. Um, very quickly then to finish off, we, they still live, it was still, Michael Gove's comments actually were very much accepted by many educators. It was certainly the case that um, the ICT qualification as it was then was not fit for purpose. In 2003, Steering Group was formed with represent, good representation from Swansea, including uh, Professor Fran Moller, as well as Tom Crick, who's now a professor with us here, to look into, um, into the qualifications. Um, they recommended a new restructure to have computing, which includes CS and IT, as well as a digital literacy framework. Uh, Wales, is, uh, uh, Wales has really taken this on board and it was a key recommendation of the Donaldson report as part of our looking at curriculum reform. And we now have a digital competence framework, which is given the same importance as our literacy and numeracy framework within schools. Really important part of what we do. And then to finish, uh, to finish this off, looking at modern qualifications and um, with the lack of a fit for purpose ICT qualification. We knew we didn't want to get rid of everything. So what do you do? Uh, a group, or uh, again, a group of stakeholders brought together with, again, uh, uh, 
people like uh, Professor uh, John Tucker and, and Farron and others working with Qualifications Wales and this key uh, stakeholders to look at what a digital qualification in Wales should look like. And this saw the this saw the publication of the Delivering Digital Report, which was actually launched in the COFO as part of a as part of a joint event with Technocamps. And it saw the idea of the development of a GCSE and A level in digital technology. Um, I could spend another 50 minutes talking about digital technology, so I won't. Um, the biggest, the one point I would make is when we look at computing as a subject within education and more broadly, I think it's certainly the case that there's a lot of overlap between these subjects. And there was a great report from the Royal Society in 2012 looking at the reboot of computing education, and they had a Venn diagram similar to this, but they had digital literacy as part of their subject. Now, I think for us moving forward in Wales, it's certainly accepted that we can have these different disciplines, uh, different nouns to represent um, parts of the subject like Digitech, computer science and ICT that all overlap, but also have distinct parts to them with digital literacy as a core uh, strand that goes through all of these subjects, but also goes through all of our subjects within school. Um, so why does this all matter? Um, in our lifetime, computing is in a state of continual uh, revolution. It's, for, it's changing all of the time, it's impacting all of our lives. Um, when there is societal disruption, people turn towards education. So it's extraordinarily important that we ensure that our education is providing the best opportunities and support for these changes moving forward. This an absolute well-documented and recognized skill cap within the digital sector. So it's still an issue that we want to address. Um, the way that technology is driving the development of a society, the way that we interact, I've managed to go all the way through this talk without mentioning the pandemic, but can you imagine the pandemic without the technology that we have to connect with each other? It would be, it would be a significantly different experience. And the world, as we all uh, know, has become more and more digital. For better or for worse, um, it, it certainly is happening. And having students, uh, having people aware of this, both uh, more widely and to, to work in these digital sectors is going to be extremely important. Um, so yeah, that's why I think my report, uh, research is important. I hope that was interesting to everybody and apologies, it was slightly longer than I anticipated, but that was my whistle stop tour of the rise, fall and rise of CS in schools in Wales. <laughs>